you want to be amazed at how fast some people can get prepared? Well, today we want to introduce you to Vanita from the Southwest. She has only been prepping for six months, and yet she has made such great progress that she has surpassed many of us who have been prepping for many years. Stay tuned and be ready to be inspired. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kylene. And today we have another special treat. We are going to do another prep consult with our friend Vanita, who lives in the Southwest. And I'm going to let she, Vanita introduce herself to you so that she can tell you all about her. Hi, everybody. I really appreciate uh, Jonathan and Kylene uh, giving this consult because I need a lot of help. I just started prepping, uh, I suppose, in September. I started following a few people, Provident Preppers being one of them, uh, on YouTube and realized September was uh, preparedness month. And so I've always wanted to be organized and prepared and decided to start with uh, my car or my vehicle and started researching how to pre better prepare your vehicle. And it took me quite a while. So I started there. I started with a trauma kit uh, and how to supply my car for emergencies. And then I just, I realized I really need to step it up and started actually preparing uh, with food and water and watching videos as I went along. And this is where I'm at. So that's, I guess, the intro to my preparedness <laughs> journey. I really have a lot of challenges, I think. And so this consult is going to be really, really beneficial. Now you built a trauma kit. Does this mean that you have some medical background? Is that? Yes. I'm okay. a nurse, but okay. right now what I'm doing is I'm a injured worker case manager. I used to work in dialysis for many years. I managed a clinic and did chemo, peritoneal. I also worked for the state for a, a short while. And that also, I think, kind of got me thinking about preparedness because they did, you know, basic training. I guess that kind of was in the back of my mind as well, as far as preparing for emergencies. I loved my experience with the state. So I did infection control manual for the state and was participated in, in that committee. And so I, I love, I love healthcare and preparing and trying to help people. So I guess that's kind of my background. The trauma kit kind of came up with this last summer. You know, I live in, in, in the Southwest and we had a lot of car fires. It was really weird. You'd see all these cars on fire and you just don't know, is it because of oil, water? I didn't really know. I So I saw this and I realized by September, I need to kind of get prepared here. I took a stop the bleed class to try to, you know, kind of practice and, you know, with tourniquets and stuff. And I had taken classes many, many years ago. And so I wanted to practice and kind of get kind of uh, caught up with that. So I, I thought in my preparedness journey, I want to focus on, I guess, skills. And one of the skills being, I guess, emergency rescue type of uh, situations. Although I have no background in that and have not been doing that in my job, for instance. When I first started nursing, I worked in a hospital for a short period of time and, you know, you would do the codes, et cetera. So, I mean, I we sort of have a background, but I really don't. So I did some online training. So I'm trying to get the skills and practice in that regard. And I do want to, I guess, improve my my supplies and anything that I can get in that regard. I did um, get some kits from my medic when they had their sale in November. And I'm still trying to look for classes, for instance, online or 
in-house, you know, that locally so that I can get hands-on training. I also put a uh, fire extinguisher in my car. There's auto fire extinguishers. I did a lot of research and really couldn't find anything as far as safety with having something like that in a, in a vehicle. And I even went to the fire department, the firehouse near me, and they said, yeah, it's fine. So I did finally buy one. So yeah, I feel like my car has everything that it needs if I were to, you know, have to assist. And another, I guess, kind of traumatic experience was the Walmart shooting. There was somebody who had taken that work with this organization that uh, they they do EMT training and classes and certifications, and it's called ProAction here locally. Anyway, one of the people there actually assisted that particular, um, I guess, trauma situation. So any skill that you have can be applied at any time, at any moment. So that's kind of what I've been working on, trying to upgrade that, because if I ever had to, I feel like I'd be a little bit more prepared. So did you happen to see when you bought your MyMedic, if you buy their, I think it's when you buy their pro kit, that they have this little QR code that has some of their online classes. Did you try any of those? I have not. I would. I did try, but I couldn't get in. And so I tried emailing them and stuff. I'm still in the process of trying to get those classes because I think they'd be very helpful. Before we go any further, I have to say you are the poster child for a newbie prepper. You (laughs) are doing amazing things. And especially considering that you only really started prepping in um, September, you have like hands down, you are, you are doing amazing things. Got it going on. So what do you consider your biggest challenges are for you in prepping? My biggest challenge would have to be storage, water, and the heat because my garage gets extremely hot in the summertime. And, you know, I'd say a good five to six months. It's so sweltering out there, I can't even take it. And so I don't use my garage for any type of storage. So that's a big challenge because you've pretty well seen what my house is like. And I've had all my closets now turned into prep closets. I mean, I feel I'm tapped out. Water would be another thing. I don't really have what I call a lot of storage for water. And I'm not using my garage momentarily. So I just I feel I'm at a standstill and I am still trying to organize my stuff. I have to label and, and organize. And so I just kind of feel like I have projects for myself. Another thing would be gardening. I have a very small yard. I basically got what I call my retirement home, one level, small. It's pretty much what I'd like. And so my yard at first, I thought that's great. It's low maintenance. I don't do yard work. I've never been good at that. And so I thought everything was great. But then when I think of preparedness and gardening, my yard is terrible for that. So I thought, well, what I can do, I had been researching vertical gardening. And I follow this one person who only has a patio and it's a townhome, but she lives in Maryland. So it's green and humid and rainy and her stuff was beautiful. I thought, oh my gosh, she has so much produce. So I do get inspired by different people in my situation, so to speak. Now, that's why I wanted to ask you, you know, your, your recommendations for a lot of different areas, specifically growing and maybe hydroponics. I thought I have a little space where I I imagined having a hydroponics situation, but I'm pretty limited in my space. And I don't want my house to look like a prep house. I want it to look like a normal home. So let's take these um, a step at a time. So the first one, you had asked us about renting a temperature controlled storage unit. I, I don't know how much those cost to rent, but I imagine they are very pricey. They are pricey. It wouldn't be my first idea of a of a good way to go, partly because once, depending on the location compared to where you are, it may be difficult to get there. 
it may be difficult, you know, in a crisis to be able to get what you need. It's true. And I thought of that. I thought, what if I'm I'm at home and I'm not able to access it? Well, then that's not right. helpful. I thought, well, but it could be storage for, you know, for a lot of things, but they are pricey. And I thought that's money that I could put into prep items mm -hmm. yes. because so they're several hundred dollars a month. What we were wondering, I know your yard is really small, but is there a place where you could have a drop in shed? Because they're not actually that expensive. And a lot of times they'll come and they'll build them right there on site for you, right? It takes a day. Our neighbors did that. And now they have this really nice shed. But then you could have, you know, like a window air conditioning unit. And if you decided to do that, I would actually, citrus grows well in your area, right? I, I, don't, know so. I don't know exactly where you live, but. Um, we have kids who live in the Phoenix area and citrus oh. grows amazingly well there. And so you've got these, they take a little while to establish, but then you've got these big, gorgeous trees that are great at shading things, which would add more shade to that shed. When you go out there next time, look with a different set of eyes. That might be an option. Now let's talk a little bit about storing in your garage. You've got it all organized. It looks amazing. And I can't quite tell how large it is, but it's possible that you can store water in your garage. The thing about the heat and the water is that plastic is volatile. And so the heat will ac accelerate that the plastic getting into your water. But that just means I'd rotate it a little bit more often. You can get some of those tanks that are, are slender and kind of tall and they store a lot of water in a little bit of space. It's super easy to access the water from them and to fill them up. But if you did that, it would only take a small space in your garage and I think it would solve a lot of your water problem. So I would kind of look at that when it comes to gardening with all that heat, they have shade cloths that are all different percentage, like it's 20% shade or 30% shade. So it's possible to use that shade cloth and make an area where you can grow a green stock. And it's like this tower garden and you water it from the top and it waters all throughout. And then it's got this little drain. You, cause if I remember right, it's kind of gravel right outside the patio. So you have some really good drainage. You could get some green stocks. The one problem with the green stock is if, I don't know if you've got any wind there, but they can get knocked over by the wind. Mm. Right. We have a lot of wind, so I'd have so, to maybe put it against the wall. Well, or what we did is you've got those those pillars. Mm -hmm. You could just tie it to that. Like you could put some type of a okay. support and tie it, and then it's not going to go anywhere. But it's still, it's going to get sun. It's going to get sun part of the day, and then it's going to get shade, shade, which might be perfect for your environment. And then it's just me, but, you know, I thought I could learn how to pan. I could learn how to dehydrate. I could, you know, learn how to actually preserve whatever I grow because I'm not going to eat everything I grow. Right. And yeah. so I thought that might be an option, but I was waiting on, on getting anything or committing to anything. Uh, because I tell you, I am, it's really hard for me to grow stuff and not kill it. Yeah. And I get discouraged with the heat and, you know, not, producing. And one of the other things that you had talked about was growing medicinal herbs. Right? Yes. I, I wanted to talk to you about an apothecary. No. I really would love to have one. And again, that kind of goes to the healing and, and, you know, the books that I've, I've been getting, you know, like the survival medicine and, you know, all of that. And I've been slowly working on that, but having more of an herbal medicinal background and that's something that I'm I'm working on as well. I am taking Dr. Jones homegrown herbalist class right now. He's a veterinarian who's also an herbalist. And so he has a very unique perspective and I am loving this course. So oh, I would love that because, information because I am looking for a course. Yeah. He's, he's super practical in what he does. He's got this this um, sense of humor that's like a dad joke kind of sense of humor. He really talks about body systems and why you use this herb for it because, you know, there's 15 herbs that could treat the same thing. And so, I, yeah, I'm totally enjoying that class. But 
as you are looking at what you're going to plant, some of the plants you might want to plant are medicinal ones. He's real big into growing a lot of your own stuff. He's got all these different ways to preserve them, but a tincture is actually the only thing that has a long shelf life. Everything else, you've only got a couple years shelf life, but he encourages you like even just to eat them fresh. So I think you would love his, his course, but as you're kind of looking at what you want to plant, I would need help with that because again, I, I'm starting from scratch. I've never grown anything that actually survived. So if I were to get a couple of green stalks, I would, I would, wouldn't even know where to, to begin on what would be the best things to try to grow. And sometimes it's just, okay, I like to eat this. Let's put it in there. Let's experiment. Let's see how it does. Oh, this worked or this didn't work. I'm going to try this or I'm going to do this differently. Seriously, the only way is just kind of to get started. And you can grow things for a longer period of time than I can. I can't grow anything here for what, three or four months out of the year. I mean, it's cold. It's so cold. Okay. So you've got a longer season and you there's so many things that you could do in your little yard, even though it's little. What are the bushes that are growing along your back fence? Um, so I have three sage and then the other ones are called like red tip fontina or something like that. They're just bushes. There's no such thing as just bushes. <laughs> so what are the Well, they're not that... they don't produce anything. They don't produce food or anything. I could replace them. I would check and make sure that they're not medicinal first. Many sages are medicinal. I don't know what kind of sage this is. I wait. And then there's also another thing called permaculture. Have you ever heard of permaculture? I have heard so, of it, but I don't really know anything about it. So it's kind of the natural way where you're mimicking forest systems to grow things. Start looking at it because you might be surprised. Your little backyard could be something amazing. Anyway. I'd like to turn that into something amazing. Again, with the heat and lack of shade, it, it's a little harder, but... I could start with, I think, the vertical gardening. And I thought also I could start with hydroponics because that I can do indoors and I know it's temperature controlled. The only problem that I always kind of see with hydroponics, the little that I know of it, is that in a grid down situation, you immediately lose everything because it's based on having that water circulating and you need electricity for that. Now I do have a generator, so I could plug that in, you know, and keep that going. But um, I've never, I haven't even unpacked it because I don't even know where I'm going to put it. Right. So <laughs> I still have to learn about the, you know, generator and I got it because it was a good price. And just with the way things are going, I thought, oh my gosh, I need it sooner than later. So yes. I still have That's to work on practice. it. Yeah. And practice. And I, I thought my next bigger purchase would be their, their transportable uh, freezer refrigerators. They look like a cooler and you can, yes. and so I thought, well, maybe that would be more energy efficient than a full refrigerator. But I don't know that because I haven't, you know, looked into it, but I thought I have a generator if I could, you know, have one of those smaller coolers that look like an igloo cooler. They're just a little pricey. So I just thought I need to kind of have a priority list of what is it that I really need and would would add value to my preps as I go along. And I can only get like maybe one bigger ticket item every couple of months and then smaller items, you know, monthly uh, right. with my budget. Do you have any solar yet? Just that solar generator. How many watts is it? Do you know? It's a Mega 3, the Opus Mega 3. And just looking at the box, I'm guessing maybe it's around 3,000 watt hours. I think that's what it is. You could run your refrigerator with that. It sounds like you're in an area with a lot of sun. You bought the solar panels for it, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. And so you would have the ability to kind of keep that recharged. Uh, you have good sun there. So yes, I think you could use that to run your fridge and the, these little coolers, there's a bunch of them out there and they're all a little bit different. Some have with their own built-in solar panels. Obviously your fridge is a little nicer to use if you can. Not only that, but 
Um, and don't get me wrong, because I think the smaller refrigerators, the portable ones, that's great. But we're looking at some significant space constraints. Yes. And because of that, do I really want another large thing taking up space? So maybe a better option would be to make sure that I can run my fridge. Do you have a deep freeze or just the refrigerator? I have a refrigerator and then I have another refrigerator in the garage. I wanted a freezer, but when I was looking, it was during the pandemic and you couldn't find them. So yeah, I, they were hard to get. Couldn't buy it. You couldn't find them. So I just bought a regular refrigerator. In a, in a grid down kind of situation, I would pick one to run and do whatever you could do to consolidate. Cause if you're keeping, I don't know how you eat, but if you have like something in there, like sodas that you're just keeping cold, I'd pull those out and see if there's yeah. any way you can just consolidate to one. Oh, I would. I plan to just use one. I think that would be the way to go. Um, yeah. And I had planned to use the one in my kitchen because see my kitchen, there's the, the outdoor, you know, the backyard doors right there. So I could run the panel. You know, I figure once I set it up, I could have the panels and everything hooked up from the back door and it's a short if I use the garage, sure. I wouldn't even know how to how to do figure that out. I figured that, and then I thought, well, if I have the generator there, a hydroponic system could be connected to it. I would imagine the hydroponic system wouldn't take a lot of energy. As near as I know, it's just a small circulating pump that would keep that water circulating. Yes. In. Yeah, and I thought I could I could probably do better with hydroponics inside than outdoors but i could yeah. still do a, a green stock and try it but um and the thing with hydroponics i mean there are most systems you have to buy their pods and stuff and i thought well in grid down you're not going to get any of that so you're limited in that regard i want something that i can always do or take care of of the system that we tried one that had the fish in it that was a super durable system but the other one it was like, uh, this thing isn't working really well right now. What's going to happen when I really need it? So I was going to ask you what you recommended in that regard. Yeah, I don't have one that I've that I've used enough to recommend. So I, I can't really tell you on that. But I can tell you that I grow a lot in my house, in, just in soil, in windows. Oh, okay. I have my solarium and I have some hanging pots that have tomatoes growing in them right now. Oh, and I, I grow a lot of stuff just in regular soil. The problem is bugs. So when mm -hmm. you're growing indoors, aphids are a huge problem. Um, the little black flies. So you really have to learn how to manage it really well. But once you, once you get it down, I think it's fine. And you can like grow so many of the herbs like the um, basil and oregano and um, I've got mints and thyme and things like that. Um, you can totally grow those just in a window in your house. I want to learn how to do that indoors. Yes. And then also microgreens, because that way you get a lot of nutrition in a small amount of space. Growing the microgreens, you're right. It just takes this real small amount of space. The problem is it takes a lot of seed. So we have to stock up on the seed, right? And I, in your place, I probably store my seeds probably in the refrigerator just because the heat's not good for the seeds and germination rate. And I have my little arrow garden. I grew lettuce one last year and then I put it away. And so I want to start with that and then kind of see if I like it enough to, like I say, try to have like a little hydroponic in that one corner. I thought I have that one corner. What can I put? Maybe a system, a small system would work there uh -huh. as I'm working on the outdoor gardening part. What do you suggest I do? Because I feel I'm maxed out with my shelving, et cetera. I have a little bit more of my underbed uh, where I can put, you know, maybe one more shop, big shopping trip. So I've been storing like the canned chicken and, you know, the roast beef, the canned protein, vegetables and fruit, mainly fruit, because I guess what I've noticed, at least in my area, is that they've really reduced the amount of canned goods on fruit. And I, I'd like to get more. And each month, I'm pretty good at being, you know, being able to get stuff. So that's one thing like to can maybe see what do you recommend I purchase with my last of the storage? And then what do I do 
other than maybe just rotate that because I'm pretty well maxed out at max maybe three months. That's including the freeze dried meals. Another big question is I don't cook a lot. I assemble, you know, I make salads or soups or, you know, but I thought what I could do is not meals in a jar, but like meals in a bag, because I just think, okay, the reality is if the grid really went down for any significant length of time, I'd be very stressed and I wouldn't even know where to go, what to do, how to begin. I have my butane, I have my stove, but how to put things together because I'm not an expert at throwing things together and making a meal. So I thought my next many of my projects is to make, get bins and put, you know, plastic Ziplocs and put meals like the canned meals, whether it's the pasta or whatever it may be, and put them together. That way I could grab it and say, I'm going to make this. So that's a really good point. And there, there's all kinds of different ones out there. But um, this one that I remember really well, she has these little gift bags. And in the little gift bag, she's got like it, and she has the water bottle too. So if it's yes. going to take water, she's got this water bottle in there and, you know, the recipes on the front. And I would say that's a great plan yeah. as long as you're only putting, you're only using things that you like to eat because really most of us rotate through the same recipes all the time. I would be careful if you're not used to cooking things like dry beans and you would do better with a can of beans and the cans of whatever, I would absolutely use those. And then if the beauty of it is if you are, if this is what you really eat, it's so easy to rotate it. I think that's a great plan. See, you actually are on top of this. You don't need us at all. <laughs> I don't think so. That's idea. not true. <laughs> no. no, I thought I have so many questions of what, you know, recommendations that I need. It, I think that's a great plan. And I would just be careful only to get the kinds of things that you eat. I'll tell you, though, one of the biggest problems in long-term food storage. Anyway, they did this study where they did a starvation study. And the big thing that was lacking in the diet was protein. And most of our food storage is lacking protein. So I would make sure that you are a little bit heavy on the protein. Because if if you are able to get your, your backyard up where you're growing things, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. It's the protein that you're missing, right? You can take that protein and eat out of your backyard and be just fine. So for growing, I, I don't even know where to begin. So what would you recommend I start with if I were to start growing, like get a green stock and, and just put herbs in there? So I would recommend next time you go to Walmart or any other grocery store in their vegetable section, they'll have a pot that already has basil or thyme or mint or something growing. I recommend you buy that and just start small, right? I would kind of start there. I would definitely buy the green stock or whichever brand you're going to get. I'd buy the potting soil. And when you go to the nursery, I'd say, hello, Mr. Nursery Man. I'm going to just start growing some of these things. What can grow really well in my area? Because he's going to know your area. <laughs> so going into dehydrating, I don't even have room or could, can't afford a freeze dryer. But how about dehydrators? I've been looking into, I haven't gotten one yet. What kind of things definitely. are you wanting to dehydrate? Well, I actually was thinking along the lines of items for teas or tinctures. I think I'd like to put things like that together. So um, with those, heat is very detrimental. So most of the time, you're just putting it on the air setting. I like these big bags that you could just hang on your porch. And they've got like places where you they unzip and you put your herb in there or or if you're doing like greens, if you're doing spinach or anything like that, these are great for it. You put them in there and between the heat and the air, they totally dry. You don't need any power. You could just install a hook underneath your patio and keep it there. You want to make sure that you buy a decent quality. And the other thing is they just fold down. Like they, they're like spring loaded and they fold down. So they don't take up much storage space. Because if you were going to do meat, I would say... Yeah, you should get a dehydrator. You can get one of those bags and start there. Like I say, I, when it comes to growing stuff, I don't know. I was going to even ask you if you had a source for, like, let's say the the herbs or the, you know, for the apothecary to make your teas and, you know, tinctures and stuff, because maybe I wouldn't be growing everything that I would need. 
So there's a couple of good places, but I would check first with Dr. Jones at the Homegrown Herbalist. They have a store in there and he sells the bags of all these different tea formulations. He sells tinctures. He like has a really cool snake bite and spider bite kit. You have to be careful where you buy stuff from. He is a place that I have a high level of confidence that you're going to get what you hope Okay. To get. So it's called so. Dr. Jones Homegrown Herbalist. If yeah. I look at that up, I'll find where yeah. to take the classes and what he, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then going back, I, I also had contemplated maybe putting a small split in my garage so that I could actually use it as storage. Uh, maybe not for like the food, but other things that I would maybe like to put in there, like the oh, water. Like, like a mini split? Uh-huh. I thought that might be cheaper than trying to get some type of, self, you know, controlled storage yeah, awesome. area. And I know those those big barrels of water are pretty pricey, so I'd have to really save and wait for that. But I could get prepared for that. A couple of approaches you could use. Uh, sometimes I've seen people actually just have a HVAC guy run a, you know, an air conditioned line into the garage with a return or the mini split or a window air conditioner, some way that you can reduce that temperature in there uh, at probably a fairly reasonable cost. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's a great option. And by doing that, your garage, you have a lot of room in there and you could do a lot. The one thing that would concern me is that every time that garage door goes open, your neighbors see everything. So your garage, you've done a fabulous job of every, you know, everything's in bins, right? They don't understand what's in there. So I would just be a little bit careful of that. Okay. You know, that's right. Because I don't like when they can, they're walking their dogs or whatever, and they can see in as I'm coming and going. So going back to storage inside my home, am I tapped out? Like, am I just going to stay at, you know, let's say the two to three months max of canned goods and protein food. I I have been to the LDS warehouse and uh -huh. I do have some of that, but I mean, I'm not going to go because I don't know where else to put those where else? cases. Right. So talk to me, your, your house is 1600 square feet. It is. And so how many bedrooms do you have? I have three bedrooms and my office that I'm in right now. My guest room where I have my my candles and my batteries and my lighting. And then like I have a blackout box that's all in there. That's there. That needs to have, I just kept putting stuff in there. It's a mess. So I have to work on organizing that. And then underneath that, what I have is what I call my, my cookware. So I would pull that out if I were stressed out and I have my little but uh, thing of butane, my little thing and cook pots and my little fire blanket, everything that I would need to, if I had to cook in my kitchen, basically to heat water. All of this is just so that I can, I'd be happy <laughs> to heat water so that I can make soups or heat things up. And up above, I have all my patio cushions up there because I don't want them to get messed up and dirty and they kind of sort of already are. So I don't want to keep them outside, even under cover, because the rain and stuff, it, they, they will get ruined. My goal is to put those out in the garage somewhere so that I have a whole shelf up above. And I could put more, I guess, number 10 can cases up there. And I did practice. I could load up my car in about like 15 minutes. Good awesome. job. So I, I don't know if I'd take everything I needed, but I could put like my Vesta. I have a Coleman stove. I have my little thing with the butane stove. And then I have my propane and stuff in my hall closet with all the shaping stuff. It would take me a while to put that all in. And then I have... Um, I did want to ask you before I forget, I'm going to ask you about the footballs. I did see your um, video on the, on the, uh, you know, the commode situation. Oh, I have yeah. a portable, a portable, you know, with one of those little tents that you can pop up like for camping. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have, I have two tents. I've never set them up other than the pop-up one. I have a tent that, you know, I've never set that one up, but I have a tent and another sleeping bag. So yeah, I sort of practiced a little bit and I, I don't know, I get a little overwhelmed. And then what I'm working on is I do have a big suitcase. I would put like all my medications. I have about 
three months worth of medications. I could throw things in there, some clothes. And what I have in there is what I call my heritage album. So it's my pictures, my documents. And so I could throw that in the car. And that's about it. My car's kind of small. I wish I had a big van like you do, but I don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm in the process. I hope nothing ever happened to where, you know, I'm in the middle of a process. That's being very organized and, and working it through in your head first. Well done. So do you have yeah. a laundry room or a laundry closet? I have a small laundry room and that's where I could probably put shelves and try to, I thought in my head that I could try to build out in that room. And then when it comes to security, that's another challenge for me. So I'm looking into getting like storm doors and from the front and the back, because that's that other layer. Yes. And I did yeah. put the three inch nails in the door post. And then I have the camera, the ring camera in my garage and the front door, but I'm very exposed. I don't have like your house. It looks like you have land around your house. And yeah. you're a little separated from your neighbors. Well, I'm not. Yes. I'm I'm in a neighborhood. And I do feel very vulnerable. Like when you think about it in that regard, yeah, I feel pretty vulnerable. Anybody can just come up to my yard. It's a short, small yard. So are you doing storm doors or security doors? They're called storm doors. I wish I could. I don't really know. What's the difference between that and a security door? So a lot of the storm doors will have glass in them. It works great in like areas like ours, but the security doors usually have the bars and then they have like this mesh that you can't get through. So what'll happen is you can close it at night and air can still get into your house and nobody can penetrate that. That's one thing that I really liked about the security doors is because if you're in a grid down situation, do you really want to at night not have any airflow? That's a problem. Now, for the back, it would be considered a security door. But my front door, it also has to be custom because it's like a 10-foot door. It's not a regular size door. Uh -huh. And I wouldn't want metal and all of that to look like they're not that attractive. Some of them are gorgeous. Because I, yeah. I went, I looked at Home Depot and Lowe's and that's where I'm going to Yeah, probably... no, we're not talking Home Depot and Lowe's. So I would have to go through like a company that makes them. You could just look up Titan uh, security doors and they will have some kind of a dealer in your area, I'm sure. They are a little bit pricey they are for pricey. sure, but they are very well built and create a very, very good secure entrance. I think that that's going to be the most helpful. And then I have this one big window here in my office that looks out to the front and uh -huh. that one to put 3M film, not only for the heat, but also it would hold back if they were, you know, if my window was to be yes. breached in any way. So that's, that's, again, security is what I started looking into in January, and I haven't gotten to where I've committed to anything yet. Like yeah. I say, it's, it's to do all of it is kind of overwhelming. So yeah. I'm trying to work really? on the gardening and the hydroponic part. Uh, and then, of course, the herbs and I, the, the part that I love would be learning about that. And yes, I'm going to look up these classes. It. That's the fun part to me is to yeah. learn that. And I have yeah. baked some bread, but I have to learn how to, I don't cook or bake. So that's kind of a challenge, but I'm slowly getting there. And these are so all those when, small, steady steps that you just one on the other. And it's surprising how much progress you make as you look backwards. In the moment, it seems slow, but in, as you look back and, and realize that that time would have passed anyway, and all, I've got all these new skills and things that you put in place, and yeah, just keep doing it. I did have a question about your video said, like, small little Nerf balls in a sock, and you put it in there so that you won't have backflow. Uh -huh. That's what I'm working on. I'm trying to look for some of those, or if not, order them. What we will probably just use is a couple of... Uh, cotton cloths that are saturated with Crisco or vegetable shortening. And uh -huh. that creates a, a nice ball that you can just, it's malleable. You can stuff it in there and the grease keeps it waterproof and airproof. And so 
you know, there's, there's a real simple solution if you, you know, if that's something that you want to do, but you can also find, you know, something else out there that's going to work well. Well, I like the idea of the Nerf ball because, but you, like you're saying, you have to find the right side. Or... And you're going to want to make sure you put it in a stocking, right? Yeah. Because you want to be able to pull it out. So yeah, I have that to work on. That's one thing I wanted to put that kit together right away. Now I have my bags and my aqua bob and everything in my guest bathroom. Let's say the water's turned off and I could still fill my tub with my aqua bob, then I feel like I have enough water for a couple months. But what do you think about growing, I guess, in the future? Am I tapped out? Maybe I could get one of those big barrels for the garage. Or how about a rainwater catchment barrel that you could have outside? Sometimes those are just really, really nice because when you do get rain, that's a way to get more right there and it's amazing how much you can get off your roof uh you know just a half inch rain results in a lot of water i mean it, it's amazing how that adds up so yeah i would look in and some communities are actually help you buy those water tanks to, to mm -hmm. harvest water because it, it helps them manage storm water and and you know pollution and such i don't have gutters but i can put it where i think i could collect you know, yeah. you know, where it drips. So I, I think I just have like a few months of everything, you know, water, food, that's so and good. that's where I'm at. I don't that's... know how to get past that. You actually have more than that because sometimes it's not about the stuff that we have. It's about our knowledge. It's about what we know and our skill level. And you are doing a fantastic job of continuing to build your skills. You would be a fantastic asset to people like us, right? If something bad happened. Continue to build your community to find like-minded people. I'm trying to find that. You know, I yeah. I joined, you probably know, uh, what is it What is it called? City Prepping. And he started kind of a, you know, where you, you subscribe and then you, you know, they have forums and and then you can connect because a lot of people, that's kind of what they wanted. But unfortunately, there is nobody in my law area. Sometimes when we think about our community, we focus too much on our prepping community. You talked about a prayer group, right? Oh, yeah. The mm -hmm. individuals in your prayer group would be a great community. They don't all have to be preppers. They can be, because what a great resource. Do you have anybody who, if you were sick, would bring you some food for dinner or could take you to the hospital. Those kinds of people you need to build those relationships with because mm -hmm. you'll be able to help them and they'll be able to help you. And there are people that I'm sure you work with and just think about people you can build relationships with who are gonna have your back. You'll be surprised how much you already have in place. I do have a couple of people from that. I go to two churches, all right? So one on Saturday night and it's like a non-denominational and then the one on Sunday is an Anglican church. I have more, I guess, opportunity to meet with people in the smaller church. And then one of the prayer ladies goes there. So that's kind of how I knew about it. And and so, you know, I've developed a relationship with a pastor and his wife and his daughter. Two of his daughters live in my, they live a, a few blocks away from me. But they're not really preppers. They have an idea because I was the one that sort of suggested that she and her husband, um, you know, they, they have a lot of camping gear and stuff. So we were sort of talking about it. And she's like, oh, I've got to get my stuff in order because they've got a lot. You know, I guess they're they're sort of prepping, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure. But we talked about it. So, for instance, I just thought if we had to secure my neighborhood, he would be part of it because he has, you know, he knows how to hunt and, you know, he has everything. And so they would be ideal prep community, you know, uh -huh. for a lot of different reasons. So I haven't really broached it with them, but they would be a perfect couple because they yeah. are part of the church community. And the reality is we might need to protect our neighborhood, you know, yeah. You absolutely might need to. And it's those relationships. A lot of, okay, most people who are in some type of a church organization are going because they're trying to be better people. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a safer place, not like yeah. not like it's guaranteed, but it's a safer place to be able to um, go and work together and stuff. And so yeah. don't share more than you feel comfortable sharing, right? 
but um, definitely build that relationship. Circling back around to security, outdoor lighting, they have lights now that are solar powered. You don't have to run power to them or anything. They're motion activated. Criminals don't like light. So when I put the ring in front of my garage, I uh -huh. put two solar lights, kind of like their little gates to the back. So as far as security, I, I feel, I, I don't mind if my house lights up like a Christmas tree. I want it <laughs> yeah. lit up. I have all of that lit up and the front lights up. I just need to get a, a better light in the back. But I was going to do that when I put in my doors. You're, you're on it. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for being an example of doing great things. And now for the question of the day, what suggestions or ideas do you have for prepping in a hot, dry climate? Share with us. And thanks for being part of the solution.